Welcome to 28storms.com. This is a special early morning update on this Monday, October 10th. We now have major Hurricane Hova bearing down on Mexico, and during the overnight hours, much of the state of Florida was impacted by what very well could have been a subtropical storm. So we have a lot to review, so let's get right on into it. As of the 2 a.m. Pacific Time official advisory from the National Hurricane Center, Hurricane Hova is now a powerful Category 3 major hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour. The maximum sustained winds are forecast to increase to Category 4 intensity with an overall peak intensity of 135 miles per hour shortly before the system makes landfall. It is expected to weaken just a little bit back down to a Category 3, but the bottom line is we could see a lot of significant damage if this track were to pan out for portions right along the coast. It's currently moving toward the east at 5 miles per hour, but we see that the official forecast is showing a turn more toward the north in the general direction of Manzanillo, Mexico, and it's forecast to make landfall at 11 p.m. Tuesday evening. One bit of good news is that the hurricane force winds only extend 15 miles away from the center, so much of the coastal communities along the Mexican coastline will not be experiencing hurricane force winds. That said, communities that are affected by the eye wall will suffer significant damage, not to mention there is more than likely going to be a rather significant storm surge located directly under and just to the east of where the eye makes landfall. So therefore, all interests within the current hurricane warning area need to be bracing for these conditions, which will begin within the next 36 hours. In fact, all areas, especially between Manzanillo and Puerto Vallarta, should be paying very close attention to this storm. This is the latest look at the spaghetti model plots, and we still have several model members that are taking this hurricane a little bit more toward the north, and this is definitely going to be impacting the city of Vallarta. The one bit of good news for them is that the storm will be coming in more so from the south-southeast, and that's going to help to mitigate the storm surge risk directly within the suburbs of that town, but areas just to the south are more than likely going to face the full brunt, including very high winds, the risk of storm surge, and pretty much this whole entire area will face the risk of some flooding, especially in higher terrain where we could easily exceed 10 to 15 inches of rainfall. This is the latest look at Hurricane Hova on the latest enhanced infrared imagery, and it's pretty apparent that Hova has rapidly intensified into now a major hurricane that eye is now becoming more prominent with time and in fact the whole entire storm is beginning to expand and increase in size just a little bit and the latest indications are now that this will eventually become a category 4 hurricane right before landfall we see on the latest water vapor that the upper level environment appears to be favorable for additional strengthening and as the official forecast is calling for the center is eventually going to take that turn more toward the north and eventually impact all areas surrounding Manzanillo, Mexico and points just to the north and west. Now very briefly this is an update on the subtropical system that is now currently moving over the state of Florida. This very well could have been a subtropical storm when it made landfall along the east coast during the overnight hours. Obviously this was not classified as a subtropical system otherwise we would be dealing with the name Rena but the Hurricane Center felt that the system was not quite organized enough for classification. Nevertheless, it produced over 70 mile per hour wind gusts over much of the east coast of Florida, and we see that convection is once again flaring over that surface circulation that has formed, and we can see it swirling about to the northwest of Orlando, Florida quite well, even on the latest regional radar animation. And finally, as is often the case with landfalling subtropical or even tropical systems, there is always the risk of isolated weak and brief tornadoes. Sure enough, this morning we do have a tornado watch in effect for portions of northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. And this threat, along with the th risk of heavy rainfall, will expand into the Carolinas over the next day or so. So thank you for tuning into this abbreviated edition of the 28storms.com tropical weather update. Please check by again sometime later this evening for another more extensive tropical weather video.